Hi, in this slide I want to focus on the term corporate culture and notice that in the, the balance scorecard and the pyramid of things including balance scorecard, we didn't really see the term corporate culture and everybody's heard it and everybody kind of knows that it's around and it's important, but, but what exactly is it? Uh, in a very generic way or simple way would be, well, it's how we do things around here, but what's important is, is far more of it is unseen than seen. The company may say, this is our policy, these are our vowed practices, whatever, but that's not close to what's actually happening. Basically, the way management does things, what they, the talk, what they walk, what they do is really uh, dictates the politics of, of uh, what's going on around the place. Um, now, every company and family uh, has a culture. Uh, you can either choose to manage it for your long-term benefit or it will manage you typically for mediocrity or less. Um, as Tolstoy said in uh, his book, Anna Karenina Through the Protagonist, he said all happy families, 1% of them, are happy in the same way. The rest of the families find their own ways to be unhappy. So that's a, that's a family culture that's sort of under, you know, unseen there that's working. Um, if you are, uh, you know, solo Suzuki kind of a company, you know, you've got you know, 35 people at your place, you're only at one location, uh, the guy who owns the company runs the company, that person is the hub of the wheel. All the people are like spokes reporting to the hub. And so the culture can be very informal because the, 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 the principal manager is always there saying, this is what I want, this is not what I want, this is how we do stuff, watch me, watch me, watch me. If the company though is to scale bigger than uh, an owner operator being on deck all the time and have multiple remote locations, then we have to start to rely on information systems, control systems, and value systems, hexagons, if you will, that will at once energize people, but help them stay aligned and working together. So you can choose to make your, your culture very formal very strong and there are formal strong unhealthy cultures for example i'm just going to guess that some public uh, monopoly bureaucracies like the irs for example is going to have a very formal strong culture i don't think it's probably very healthy there are probably a lot of people there just wishing their life away counting the years and months till they can actually get out with their pension and certainly it's not adaptive because there are no incentives to innovate or take risks or whatever uh, but if it is formal, strong, and healthy and adaptive, then the company can grow rapidly and it can and, and it's it's it can be consistently profitable, which makes it saleable. Um, now the history of corporate culture management arguably could go back to uh, Frederick, you know, Taylor in nineteen oh six, where he sort of espoused what we now call Theory X. He said a corporation's a machine. Everybody that works here is a cog. We're going to make the cog so small and so simple that they only have to do one thing, and then it's time in motion, da da da, da type of thing. Uh, a most recent best book on, on corporate culture management and how to manage it and measure it and you know renew it and so forth is by Jim Heskett, longtime mentor of mine, professor of mine back in my B school days. Uh, his latest book is called the, the the Corporate Culture Cycle, and it's a, it's a very dense book, uh, but Heskett's the one that pioneered the service profit chain, and he continues to build on that and other change management uh, research he's done for a wonderful career. So it's, it's a terrific book. Um, if you go and look at research on how much of the profits come from uh, the, the effectiveness of a, cor of co of a company's culture, uh, there, there are surveys that say, uh, on average, about 50%. Ken Iverson, when he was alive and still running uh, New Core Steel, estimated that it was 70%. He said, yeah, sure. We pioneered uh, using new technology to make steel. That was not our technology, but our culture made it work and executed. And it was our culture of keeping our plants purposely small and everybody tied into the bottom line that allowed us to create, um, to be the highest uh, producer of safely produced ton steel at the absolute lowest cost while paying our workers the highest wages in the industry. Um, and so this allows you to not only make profits year after year on a sustainable basis, 
But because you're making great money and you've got an adaptive culture, you can continue to innovate faster the competition and you can grow faster the industry too. So it's not just high profits, it's sustainable profits, and it's the growth rate trajectory of the profits that makes sense. Um, in Heskett's book, you can read a lot about Nucor and Southwest and, and other uh, companies that have got sort of cult-like cultures that you know were covered in books like Built to Last. Um, what's curious to me is companies like Disney and Zappos actually will give you, they will run universities and they'll give you tours of their company and they'll explain uh, and demonstrate all the artifacts and stories and heroes of their corporate cultures. And you think, well, why are they being so open? Why are they sharing all the super duper secret stuff? And the answer is, first of all, 99.99% of the people who come through there aren't in their business, so they're not a competitor. The one, the very few people that would be head, to head competitors could come through there, but they can't re reduplicate the culture. They are too enmeshed in dysfunctional, uh, you know, huge, you know, structural old fashioned cultures that they just, they can't change. And so at once, Disney and Zappos are saying, you know, how you define, measure, and manage your culture is the most important thing you could do, um, but it's also the most difficult thing to, uh, to emulate. So the questions of how can you audit what your current culture is, how do you renew it, and how do you reinforce it, uh, you, can, you can check out Heskett's book, but I'd like to think that a lot of these video clips over time will help you jump start and, and answer these questions. Remember also that that culture by itself is not great leadership, it's not a brilliant focused core renewal strategy for a given branch, and it's not execution. You can have a very strong healthy culture in a way, but you can have a bad strategy and a, and a culture will attract and keep people and good people might be able to change the strategy. But can a great culture save a bad strategy? I don't know. Uh, so the point is all four of these things, leadership, strategy, execution, and culture, have to fit together to give you that synergistic pop and allow you to make that high sustainable uh, profit power you'd like to have. Um, the next slide will look at specific elements of a corporate culture. Thank you.